Hello friends, I hope all is well and that you've pondered on those truths that we studied last time. That God's ways are not my ways and His thoughts are not my thoughts. The scripture says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it out. Remember, that's found in Isaiah 55, verses 8, 9, and 11. We started building a spiritual house on these two spiritual foundations, that God's word is eternal. It stands firm forever in the heavens, Psalm 119, verse 89, and that God's word never returns void. It always does what it says it will do, Isaiah 55, 11. Today, as we study God's word, may he teach us another biblical truth that will help us to live lives saturated with his love, grace, and hope, and peace as we do our part to be his hands and his feet and to live life above all the circumstances and trials that we face. Last time we discussed these two biblical principles. Number one, God is in control, so fear not. Remember the psalmist said, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Remember the thing that we learned last time was God's promotions are usually sudden and surprising. So be ready. If you missed that study, you can find it in the archives under that title. We looked at Joseph we looked at David, we looked at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We looked at Daniel, Ruth, and Hadassah, a.k.a. Queen Esther. Today, let's add another great truth to our spiritual house, and it's this. God's solutions are often strange and simple, so be open. Let me say that again. God's solutions are often strange and simple, so be open. Think with me. We're going to look at a few today from the scriptures. The first one is Joshua and the Jericho Wall. Remember that? The Israelites have been on this journey out of the land of Egypt. They're on their exodus on this 11-day journey across the desert. It should have taken them 11 days, and it took them 40 years. They were a little slow. God had to do a lot of pruning. So what happened is this. They end up here coming up to Jericho and they see these great walls and they're just freaked out. And God says, it's okay, I got this. Let me show you, here's the plan. I want you to march around the city once per day for six days. But then on the seventh day, I want you to march around seven times. And I want you to send the band out and I want you to shout to the Lord when the priests blow their trumpets. Can you imagine that? I bet you that if it's ever been talked about at a war college like West Point or Annapolis or the Air Force Academy, I bet if those instructors are not faith-based, if they don't know God, I bet they have laughed and thought that was the craziest battle plan ever thought up. But remember, God's ways are different than ours. You know what happened when they obeyed. The walls came tumbling down. I also think of the Old Testament where Naaman, he had leprosy. He was a mighty warrior. He was a commander for the army of Aram. And he ends up with leprosy and his servant knew the prophet. He said, hey, I know this man of God, this prophet of God, that if we go to him, he can cure you of your leprosy. And so they find Elisha and they ask Elisha what to do. He brings all of these gifts, all of this amazing stuff. And he says, heal me, make me whole. And he expected Elisha to do some incredible stuff. And instead, Elisha told him this. He said, hey, go down in that muddy Jordan River, and I want you to wash yourself seven times. And when you come up, you'll be healed. Well, guess what? Naaman thought that was the stupidest idea he had ever heard. And he went away angry. 
But Naaman's servant stopped him before he left, and he spoke some sense into his life. See, he had earned the right, and he spoke into his life, and he finally talked Naaman into obeying, and he went down, and he washed himself in the muddy Jordan River seven times, and when he finally obeyed, he came out the seventh time, and his skin was like that of a young boy. Can you imagine I also think of Gideon when he went up against the Midianites. You know, in Judges chapter 6 and 7, you know the story. He was, he was um, stomping grapes in the wine press in the middle of the night because he was afraid of the Midianites. And God got a hold of him and said, you're going to go and, and deliver my people. And it's what I call the less than 1% battle plan. And I'm sure this one's been discussed in those war colleges, and they thought it was crazy. They thought it was a joke. See, they were outnumbered. It was an incredible outnumbering, like six to one. There were 180,000 warriors against 32,000 Israelites, and God said, nope, that's too many. Um, just tell the guys, hey, if you're fearful, if you're afraid, you've been gone from home too long, if you're missing your mama or you're missing your wife or you're missing your babies or you're a little bit afraid, go ahead and go home. And 22,000 took off like that. And so all of a sudden they went from 32,000 to 10,000. And God said, nope, that's still too many. He said, hey, take them down to the river and um, I want to show you something. And, and 9,700 of them lapped the water like a dog, and God said, uh, go ahead, send them home too. And so he went all the way from 32,000 to 300, and that's less than 1%. And God had to do that because he had to eliminate all possibilities of Israel taking any of the credit for this amazing victory. So I don't know about you, um, that, that just blows me away. And so I want to ask you a question before we end today. Could you trust God in the less than 1% of things, whatever that is? And you're probably thinking, man, that's all Old Testament stuff. It happened thousands of years ago. God doesn't do stuff like that today. But you see, he does. I want to give you another modern day example. You see, the year is 1971. The place is Broadway, New York City, a theater. They hosted Jesus Christ Superstar. And that play mocked God. It troubled many believers. It sent thousands of Christians to their knees in prayer, asking for God to intervene. And so God's solution, his answer, his response was incredible. You see, because that same theater today that same stage where Christ was mocked then, today, is the stage of Times Square Church. And thousands and thousands and thousands of words have been spoken for God, to honor God. The, the platform today where he was mocked, he is exalted from day in and day out. You see that original drug-crazed actor who played Jesus was saved, and he returned to dedicate that theater to God's glory. I don't know about you, but I've been there. Just a few short weeks before 9-11, Nancy and I attended a Sunday afternoon service in that same space that's now home to Times Square Church. You see, God is the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is still doing some of the same things he did then. He's doing them today, and he can do them for you. You see, in my journey with Jesus, I've observed this. I said it last time. I want to say it again. God is never late. He's seldom early. He's always right on time. And I can make this statement today just like I did the other day with full confidence. You can trust God with all things, in all things, and through all things. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to picking this study up next time. Until then, be blessed and bless others. And again, remember, if you need anything at all, please contact the church office. We love you. We're praying for you. We're praying for God's best for you in this season. God bless you.